Time for another podcast by George. Straight talk, straight from the heartland. That'll have you saying, by George, I think he's got it. Now, here's George. Hello, hi, how are you? And welcome to another podcast by George. Well, you know, it seems like I've spent the better part of my life in the range between bemused and befuddled. And I'm kind of befuddled now because of early polling regarding the presidential candidates, uh, the Democrats out there that you're starting to see... Uh, the polls popping up with ever increasing uh, significance, supposedly on MSNBC, CNN, and now an Iowa poll in the Des Moines Register. Now, there's a couple of things about that. Number one, this podcast is, uh, you know, very high on uh, news, blues, and interviews, perspectives from the heartland. Well, why is that important? Well, here's a a perfect example. The Iowa caucuses are all important. Iowa is in the spotlight right now. Everybody is turning to the heartland when it comes to the early phases of this uh, Democratic presidential race. So uh, this is a pretty cool deal for the state of Iowa, for the country, and for podcasts by George. The other thing that uh, is in this befuddled stage, as far as I'm concerned, is A, the fact that anybody is paying any attention at all to polls at this stage of the game, and B, why anyone isn't uh, questioning the polls in general, the very fundamentals of polling. Because, as you'll recall, Hillary Clinton should be our president right now. According to the polls, right up until the night of the election, I think, uh, she was going to win. Win easy. Win big. Didn't happen. Everybody was wrong. All of the major polls, the Iowa poll, all of that stuff, it was all wrong, including the guy Nate Silver. Remember him, the big pollster, the guy that had the uh, Major League Baseball statistical background and all that stuff and had predicted every race and every candidacy and had never been wrong and with all certainty this guy was going to pick the next president of the United States and had done that and it was going to be Hillary Clinton. Uh, wrong. The dude was wrong. He's kind of like uh, Yoda of polling. Well, Yoda fell on his ass. Yoda was <laughs> Yoda couldn't have been worse. A guy was completely wrong. So now we're starting to get all caught up in these polls again. And I, yeah, I'm kind of wondering about this. And I, here's the uh, headline in the Des Moines Register this uh, Sunday morning. Now, this was published June 8th, copyright 2019, Des Moines Register and Tribune Company. Well, the field of Democratic presidential candidates is starting to settle into tears. Joe Biden leads the pack, and Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg are in close competition for second place. A new Des Moines Register Mediacom slash CNN Iowa poll shows 24% of Iowa's likely Democratic caucus scores. So, okay, I didn't get that from the headline when I first looked at it, and that's, that's key. This is 24% of Iowa's likely Democratic caucus goers say that former Vice President Biden is their first choice for president. Sanders, a Vermont senator, is the first choice for 16% of poll respondents, while Warren, a Massachusetts senator, and Buttigieg, mayor of South Bend, Indiana, are at 15% and 14% respectively. No other candidate cracks double digits. California Senator Kamala Harris comes closest at 7%. And other numbers within the poll indicate some underlying strengths for her. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar and former Texas Congressman Betta O'Rourke are at 2%. Okay, so let me break this down for you a little bit, give you a little podcast by George Perspective from the Heartland as to how I'm looking at this and particularly looking at this poll. So if you're telling anyone at this point that you're a likely caucus goer, and we're talking nine months, ahead, of, almost a year ahead of the caucuses, you're, for lack of a better description or term, you're a wingnut. Now, I use that to, to denigrate and speak negatively about the right in particular. They're, they're uh, you know, Freedom Caucus and those Looney Tooney fringe people are probably best known as wingnuts. But we got them in the left, too. And these are the left-wing wingnuts, the really active, dyed-in-the-wool people that are going to be there for absolutely, I mean, 
you know, if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, they're going to go to the Iowa caucus. Can I tell you that I'm going to be in an Iowa caucus? No. Can my wife? No. Can most of the people that I know, they wouldn't, you know, not only would they not commit to being a likely caucus goer at this point, they wouldn't even answer the poll. Uh, They wouldn't answer the phone. They're not getting involved at this early stage. So these are the kind of people that you're talking about. Now, the people that they're choosing for uh, their favorite, the people that they're supporting and, and that is giving an entire perspective in skew uh, to, to this polling. Let's take a look at this. Vice President Joe Biden. Now, this is how I look at it. These are the people, these are the older, more successful people that are intimately involved in the Democratic Party that have been ingrained in this, have had a relationship with their elected representatives, including Joe Biden, going back for decades. They're going to support him. They are the people that are at retirement, uh, maybe even past (laughs) retirement, but they're set. They did great during the years of Bill and Hillary Clinton. They did great during the years of Barack Obama. They hate Donald Trump, like all the Democrats do. I mean, that's a given. That's nothing new. They want to return to those glory years. If we can just get the country back to the way that it was under Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, we'll be fine. That's what they want to do because they're fine. They're picking Joe Biden. 24% of Iowa's likely Democratic caucus goers say former Vice President Biden is their first choice for president. Now, Sanders, a Vermont senator, is the first choice for 16% of poll respondents. So who are these people that are likely caucus voters voters, uh, that are lining up behind Bernie? Well, they're the people that are still frosted about him getting screwed in the Iowa caucus the last time around. So if they get an opportunity to answer that question, are you going to the Iowa caucuses? Oh, yeah. And if you're going to the caucuses, who are you voting for? Bernie. And here's the other thing about it. Whereas those red hats and the old line Democratic Party people that are doing just fine, these people are not doing fine, by and large. They never have. They didn't prosper under Bill Clinton. They didn't prosper under Barack Obama. They want to change. For lack of a better description, they want to overthrow the way we're doing things in a lot of ways. And they want Bernie to get that done for them. Those are the people that are supporting Bernie Sanders at this early stage. They're going to push that poll button. They're going to tell you that they're going to support Bernie Sanders. They want to get this done, and they're not passing up an opportunity to go to a caucus after they got screwed out of the last one. Elizabeth Warren, a Massachusetts senator, and uh, Buttigieg, the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, are at 15 and 14 percent, respectively. Okay, here's here's my take on this. This is going to make some people mad, but I'm, I don't care. <laughs> it's my podcast. <laughs> Here we go. Here's my, Elizabeth Warren has about as much chance of becoming president of the United States as I do. I'm serious about that. No chance. None. It will never happen. Not only will, will a not, uh, enough Democrats never support her, um, the Republican Party would dig up dead people very much uh, the way that they did with Hillary Clinton to get her defeated. It ain't happening with Elizabeth Warren. And who are her likely caucus goers? Well, they might be really left progressive people, although there are other left progressive people to vote for, most notably Bernie. You know, why would you support Elizabeth Warren? Rabid, avid feminists. They got screwed, they think, out of Hillary Clinton becoming the first female president. They want that woman in there, and they're going to go running to the caucus to try to support who they think is the most progressive woman in the Democratic primary, in the Democratic caucus, Elizabeth Warren. I got news for you. I I don't think she is. I I think uh, Tulsi Gabbard is much better choice as far as I'm concerned. But that who's supporting Elizabeth Warren. And then Buttigieg, this guy's the mayor of South South Bend, Indiana. Now, I I like him because he's young. I like him because he did a tour of of duty. He's a a veteran, a combat veteran, I think. I got great respect for that. But, I mean, he came roaring out of South Bend, Indiana. And who is this guy? Uh, Nobody had heard of him. And he jumped to the top of these polls. Not the very top, but near the top of the polls right away. Well, he's bringing this contingent of uh, gay, lesbian, BTs, GBLT folks. They're all supporting him. They're all on his bandwagon immediately. And uh, there's lots of them. We're figuring that out in this country. We're finding out there are a lot of people who are heavily vested in that, either on a personal basis or because of somebody they know, and they want to vote for him for that reason. Well, here's my problem with all of this. 
And it has to do with my perspective on politics and my perspective with what's wrong with America to, to a great extent. And here it is. And some people aren't going to like this. But a lot of people are voting and supporting these presidential candidates because of the politics of me. All right. Now, what I mean by that, as an example, we talked about Joe Biden. They want to have a return to the security and glory days and what worked well for them, which was the administrations of Bill Clinton, Bill and Hillary and, and uh, Barack Obama. Joe Biden was in that mix. He was involved in all of that. That was best for them. The folks that are supporting Bernie, and he's got a wide-ranging agenda, so I don't want to, you know, tar folks with just one brush, but there are a lot of people that just want to overcome their lack of financial security and success in this country through their livelihoods, through their lifetimes, and they view Bernie Sanders as the best reason for that. Elizabeth Warren bringing all of these feminists in that want that woman president, that have a a, a major chafe in their life over being discriminated against because they're a woman. Understandable. I, I'm not denigrating or saying that that's not a viable issue. Is it top of the list? No. Wasn't top of the list for Hillary. It's not top of the list for her. I, I got nowhere to go with that. And then Buttigieg, the same way with the GB, GLBT thing. I, come on. I, yeah, it's an important issue, but it's not top of the list. And if you're supporting him and if you're voting him because of your personal situation or even somebody that you know, that's the politics of me. What's the politics of us? Here, here it is. Here's what I want from my government. I want my government to keep us alive. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for it to kill people. I'm not looking for it to uplift a specific special interest. I just want to stay alive, healthy and alive. That's what I want my government to do. So let's peel that onion back a little bit more. What keeps us alive? Short term, I want a president that understands the danger that we're in messing around with these nuclear powers around the world, many of whom we armed ourselves. But the agreement with Iran on nuclear weapons, let's get back in that. Let's, let's do something about Iran. Let's keep those people happy. I don't want to go to war with Iran. They're nuts and they got nuclear weapons. Who understands that? Well, a lot of the Democratic field, and again, one of the most notable, the one that's uh, pegging her candidacy on regime-changing wars in particular, is Tulsi Gabbard, who was criticized widely for going to uh, Syria and talking to Assad one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of people are still picking on her about that. Man, I love that. Let's do some more of that. Let's sit down one-on-one. -on -one. Let's have leaders that go out and, and talk to these folks before we go to war with them and see if we can get this straightened out. And she's all about regime-changing wars and the harm this has done to the country. You've heard me talk about it before. Joe Biden was a part of it. Robert Mueller was a part of it. A part of what? A part of the Iraq War. The search for WMDs. George Bush. Half a million dead people. Half a million dead. That's conservative. There may have been more than that killed because of that war. As much as I hate Donald Trump like everybody else, as repulsive as he is, as much as I am sick and tired of being lied to by that dude, he hasn't killed half a million people yet. He doesn't have us involved in a major war yet. He hasn't crashed the economy. We don't have a major recession. All of those things you can pin primarily on the Republicans and George Bush the second. Well, anyway... Short term, I want a president that's not going to go to Venezuela, that's not going to have a war down there, that's not going to go to a war with Iran, is not going to go to war. Uh, we're already at war with Syria, but it's not going to go to war with North Korea or get us in more problems with China. I want somebody that's going to keep me alive short term. That's the politics of us. Keep me alive keep us alive short term. So what's the long term issue? What's the most concern long term to us, all of us? Is it feminism? Is it gay rights? Is it guns? Yeah, maybe if you're in an auditorium and some nut with an AR-15 runs in there and kills us, but it's not going to kill us all. 
long term. What's going to kill us all long term? Climate change, yeah. Who is up with climate change? Who makes that top of their agenda? Because that's going to kill us all. And I want my government, my president to keep us alive, short term and long term. And there's a lot of candidates on this list that are going to do that. And a lot of candidates that I don't think are capable of doing it and are not talking about it much. And you just can't support a candidate because of the politics of me. To give you a good example, there's a guy running, Eric Swalwell. like him a lot. He's kind of my middle-of-the-road candidate, the guy that I like. And he's not middle-of-the-road, really, maybe kind of left-center. Uh, and he's got a lot of great proposals. My God, that gun buyback program and his uh, First Amendment rights protection program. And uh, he's got a lot of a lot of proposals and bills that he's proposed and things that this guy's doing. He's young, he's articulate, he's bright, he's from the state of Iowa, but he's also a divorced father. All right, that's a big issue with me, big issue with me. I am not going to support Eric Swalwell for president of the United States because divorced father's rights are huge with me. That is the politics of me. Is it something that needs to be dealt with? Yeah. Is it something that we need to get to? I think so. Is it top of the list? Is it what you elect a president to do? No. You don't want to be like a Republican, folks, because the Republicans are voting for, well, you know, the campaign promise of Donald Trump, build a wall. But most notably, they're not voting for anything. They're voting against Democrats. They think, and wrongly so, but they think might raise their taxes that they think might take away their guns, that they think might be killing babies. It's like they're going door knocking house to house to commit infanticide, thanks to the misinformation that you get on Fox News. You don't want to be like that. And you want to be able to look at these polls and look at them in context. So that's about, that's about enough of me. That's about enough of the rant today. But that's the point that I wanted to get across. Number one, who are these guys, the pollsters? They're all wrong. Why are we paying any attention to it at all? Number two, you can't let likely caucus voters in the state of Iowa, I don't know why I can't say that, likely caucus voters in the state of Iowa control or have any influence on the momentum of these Democratic presidential candidates, many of which are great. And you can't look at the people at the top right now those candidates, and make much of it at all. And vote, please vote. The politics of us as opposed to the politics of me. Well, anyway, we need to do these once in a while just to tick people off, if nothing else. <laughs> it's just me. Let's say at this point that the perspectives and viewpoints expressed on this podcast are all mine. They're not yours. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I hope that some of them are anyway, but they're mine, and that's the way it should be. And thanks for listening. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on YouTube and some of the other platforms, uh, Spotify, and some of these places where folks don't access us very much, like Google Play. And of course, we'll see you on Facebook, where just about everybody is tuning in now. Thanks again. And that's another podcast by George.